I think it's a craze. I think it's a hype. Uh, I think it's a tulip mania bulb, bubble. It's going to burst and it's going to end very, very badly. It, it can go to 100000 It's going to do so without me. Are you tired of overpaying for your gold, silver, and platinum bullion coins and bars? Then visit sdbullion.com today. SD Bullion was recently named the 177th fastest growing company in the United States by Inc. Magazine. This is because they offer the absolute lowest prices in the industry and follow up with over the top customer service. So what are you waiting for? Go to sdbullion.com today and join more than 60,000 happy investors that save money on every precious metals purchase they make. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with your SD Weekly Metals and Markets Wrap. And with us today is Michael Pento from Pento Portfolio Strategies. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me back on, Elijah. All right. Now, the last couple of weeks, we've seen gold and silver prices drop. And I'd like to get into that. But first, on the SD uh, Weekly Metals and Markets Wrap, the first thing we have to do is the biggest news. Um, this week, Bitcoin has just been trading crazy. It's been um, like nothing I've ever seen before. It. I was just doing an interview the other day, and I guess I was a, a day behind on the price. I was like, well, you know, I think it went to 12000 um, maybe almost past 12000 and my guest was like, no, actually, it went to 12800 today. And by the time I was posting the interview, it was 14000 The next day, I said 17000 What do you make of what's happened? It, it also crashed about 3000 and now it's back up to 15000 something. I can't keep track of this. It's what, it, it, what it's actually, it, it almost hit 20000 before. I think it's like 15000 16000 yeah. per unit today. Listen, I've been... On the record for about a year and a half, maybe even almost two years, uh, and been wrong about uh, cryptocurrencies in general. I, I don't understand them, and I, when I say I don't understand them, I understand the technology fairly well. I don't understand the hysteria behind them, Elijah. So when you think about what your what cryptocurrencies are, let's just take Bitcoin for example. Uh, you have a private key, and what is your private key? Well, it's not this, you know, this little gold facsimile with the, you know, the guy looking through the, the coin and he shows you the Bitcoin with a B and it looks like you have a bunch of circuits around it. That's not a Bitcoin. What a Bitcoin is, you have a private uh, IP address and it's consistent of about 64 letters and numbers. So 64 letters and numbers are not to be considered or conflated with money. They are not virtually indestructible. And they certainly are not at any means rare. As a matter of fact, Bitcoin itself, you know, they say, they say there's 21 mil, million units available to Bitcoin. But then they go ahead and split the thing. So you have Bitcoin Cash, you have Bitcoin Gold. They all perform various functions of the various degrees of the same function, rather, which is they want to have a, a, a transaction to move electronic money over the internet uh, in this open, immutable ledger. And the only problem, I, as I say, the only problem is, is that letters and numbers are not money. It can never be money because they certainly aren't indestructible and they certainly aren't rare. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's a craze. I think it's a hype. Uh, I think it's a tulip mania bulb bubble. It's going to burst and it's going to end very, very badly. It, it can go to 100,000. It's going to do so without me. Now, so you see this crashing, I assume, uh, eventually, because it just like all bubbles do. And you were mentioning how it's kind of similar to the tulip mania. Right. Well, I mean, the, what, what is the intrinsic value of letters and numbers? What is the intrinsic worth of letters and numbers? Letters and numbers really don't have any utility outside of this ecosystem called the cryptocurrency blockchain. And as I said, there's, well, I don't think I even mentioned this yet. There's a thousand or so, even more than a thousand cryptocurrencies out there. So they are not rare. This is not money. It will never be money. And it can never supplant what is real money, which is gold. You know, you can move money even fiat currency all over the world digitally, instantly. We do that already. 
So the big cachet behind cryptocurrencies is if you're a child pornographer or if you're a terrorist, if you have some illicit activity, that's the big cachet. And the fact that it's a, you know this immutable ledger that's not controlled by governments, well, governments do control uh, cryptocurrencies. And they do so by they, the, their means of shutting down exchanges. They shut down an exchange. They shut down Coinbase, for example. Well, the, all the liquidity evaporates from Bitcoin. And then they could just say anybody who transacts commerce using cryptocurrencies is subject to fine and imprisonment. Well, you need an application to affect a transaction using a cryptocurrency. So it's, if it's visible to a, a consumer, it's also visible to a government. So they can very easily shut down Bitcoin. All the liquidity, all of the utility of Bitcoin goes away and cryptocurrencies goes away. It will be relegated to the dark web to make transactions. And by, by the way, you know, if you own a unit of Bitcoin that happens to be 20,000 per unit, and then you're, you're tra making a transaction on the dark web, say I want to buy a, you know, a, a box of uh, child pornography, you know. Uh, how do I know I'm going to actually get a receipt or if I want to buy a, a, a bomb or if I want to pay off a terrorist for a, a suicide attack, whatever they use these, these cryptocurrencies for? How do I know I'm actually going to get the service that's intended? And if I don't get that service delivered, who do I call? <laughs> you know, you're on the dark web making a transaction. There's no, there's no insurance. There's no service center for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So it's a bubble. It's a fad. It's endemic of an example of um, the bubble created by nine years of ZERP, zero interest rate policies, and it's going to end very bad. Now, you mentioned how it's the real alternatives to fiat currency are gold and silver. And you think that those are the things that are eventually going to um, really take off. But why do you think precious metals, you know, in the last couple of weeks, as, as we've seen cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin, just skyrocket? Why do you mm. see precious metals? They've been got, gone down quite a bit. Gold is down about $40 from a couple of weeks ago and silver is down a dollar, a dollar and a half. What well, is your perspective? Well, that's easy. Uh, first of all, it's about tax reform. So what's happening is we've got the bill passed from the Senate, uh, their version of the bill. It's going to conference right now. But the uh, view of, upon Wall Street is that you're going to get tax reform. I'll say tax reform in quotes. It's not really tax reform. It's tax cuts uh, for just certain individuals and corporations. If you happen to be in the upper middle class, and especially if you're in a blue state, you get a tax hike. Uh, and even the, even the um, the tax cuts for individuals, they, they go away after five years. So it means really not much of a tax cut, mostly for a, mostly for corporations. But if you're going to get a tax cut and if you're going to get an infrastructure package dovetailing uh, after that, well, that puts the Fed more to the uh, on the fore. And if they're going to raise rates, and I've heard, uh, I think Deutsche Bank said they're going to raise rates five times between now. So when you get one in, in December next week and you'll get four next year, 2018, five rate hikes. I mean, that's a real uh, surge in not only nominal rates, but real interest rates, which has always hurt gold. Um, so, you know, you have to be underweight gold. I, I run an inflation deflation portfolio. And right now gold is, is under 10%, in the, about 10%, maybe a little less in the portfolio. That's the, that's the real reason why gold has got hurt in the last few days. Right. And what about the rest of the market? I know today we saw a new jobs report. For, we saw the November jobs report. And what do you think um, of how it impacted the stock market and also the precious metals? Well, it was a pretty good number uh, for the, the stock market bulls. It wasn't uh, that hot that it brought the Fed on its front foot to maybe follow through on uh actually eclipsing their dot plot, so which is going to be two or three rate hikes in 2018. Not only that, but the uh, employment cost index was up less than, than projected. So average hourly earnings, too. So um, it, the Fed is going to be raising rates slowly until they invert the yield curve in 2018. You know, 2018, to me, looks like a, a great scenario for a huge watershed moment in the precious metals arena. So you have the stock market right now is trading at, at all-time record highs outside of a few short months in the peak of the NASDAQ bubble, the apex of the NASDAQ bubble. We're at a 140%, 1.4 times GDP. That is what the stock market is trading at right now. So it's 
pretty much an unprecedented level. That that ratio is normally about 50%. So uh, we, we are we are extremely stretched valuation wise. I think that all the good news is in the stock market. Not only that, you're going to have in my in my opinion, you're going to have three rate hikes at a minimum between now and when the yield curve inverts, probably sometime in the middle to the fall of 2018. Not only that, in, in January, the ECB under Mario Draghi, the European Central Bank, is going from 60 billion euros of quantitative easing to 30 billion euros. Not only that, but the Fed will be, by October of 2018, they will be selling $50 billion worth of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. So basically, QE is going from $120 billion a month, as it is today, to zero by by October. Also by October, you're going to have those three, maybe four rate hikes. So I think the yield curve is going to invert. You know, we only have a, the spread between the two and ten is about 55 basis points, Elijah. So we don't have much more basis points to give up. So if the Fed does follow through, they raise rates three times, they invert the yield curve, the credit channel gets cut off, money supply gets cut off, and the economy comes tumbling down along with asset bubbles. And believe me, the bond market and the stock market are the, the biggest bubbles outside of, I guess, Bitcoin that the world has ever seen. Right. You mentioned, I mean, it seems like the stock market is in a bubble. And as you're saying, probably not as much as Bitcoin is right now. I've never seen anything like that, like I was well, saying. Dollar-wise. Well, dollar wise, Elijah, it's 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 infinitely greater. The bond, yeah, the bond, definitely. it's a hundred, it's a hundred trillion dollar bond bubble. But the the uh, the mania that's extent in the uh, in the cryptocurrency world is just uh, incredible. Definitely. And I was wondering, going into the end of the year and looking into two thousand eighteen, what do you see geopolitical turmoil having an impact on the markets? Um, how do you see that impacting it? Because I know, you know, just this week, um, Trump announced that, uh, you know, he says, you know, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And he's talking about moving the U.S. embassy there. And there's been some um, unrest there now. Um, so what is your perspective on that? And also the problems with North North Korea that we're having. So there's, I, I think there's outside of the Middle East, which is always a, a hotbed of contention. Um, there's two things that I'm looking at. The most two most salient points is what you just mentioned is North Korea. Um, we've tried everything as far as um, sanctions are concerned outside of a naval blockade. You know, and a naval blockade, by the way, is, as I'm sure you're a student of history, is an act of war. That's what happened in uh, what happened uh, to uh, us. What we did to Japan. So a naval block blockade is an act of war. We could do that. And, you cut off those ports in North Korea, then uh, you, that's, that's the worst sanction. So outside of those sanctions, the, the naval blockade, we've tried everything to try to, uh, to get uh, Kim Jong-un to give up his nuclear ambitions. Uh, China, we, you know, begging the Chinese hasn't really helped either. So um, we're going to have to either decide, and it's going to be in the first six months of next year, in my opinion, we're going to have to decide to live with the fact that North Korea has – uh, an ICBM that can deliver nuclear weapons to all of the United States, or we, or we just have to go to war and uh, and and try to take out those military installations. So I think that's a, that's a that is a real risk. Certainly not at all priced into equities in the slightest. The other geopolitical uh, risk I see is China. So uh, uh, Premier Xi has been elected to another five-year coronation. And uh, they have to do something about deleveraging that bubble in China. You know, their debt went from seven trillion dollars in 2007 to 30 trillion today. I mean, that, that is an unprecedented increase in debt, never before seen in the history of humankind. So you have all kinds of imbalances. It's an extremely dangerous uh, bubble that's teetering on a very narrow ledge. And the deleveraging that I think uh, Xi is going to go through in 2018. You, you, you take that coupled with the Fed funds rate hiking and the end of quantitative easing in Europe, plus the quantitative tightening, and you have a very different market that's going to come to the fore in 2018. I think that's the opportunity for precious metals investors. Like right now, I say I'm, I'm, I'm underweight precious metals, but I'm going to vastly increase precious metals as I see the economy faltering due to the pulling back of the stimuli from central banks. Please don't forget, you know, I will say this, 
2008, we had a, a, a disastrous economy, which was engendered by too, too low interest rates and too much credit and asset bubbles. Well, we, the, the debt in the world is up $70 trillion since then. We took interest rates from where they were, from 1%. We left them there for 1% for a year. Now we've left them for virtually well, 1% or thereabouts or below for nine years. Created bubbles. Everywhere you look, there's a bubble in art and in, in, precious, in uh, precious stones and diamonds and in real estate. But the two biggest bu bubbles ever are in, in equities and in bonds. And they're going to burst most likely in 2018, and it's, it's watch out below. One more, one more thing I want to add before I forget. The U.S. savings rate, by the way, the personal savings rate, is at the same level it was just prior to the start of the Great Recession. It's all the way down to 3%. Just, just a little bit above 3%. That's, that's scary. So you have record margin debt, record low cash levels, a record low savings rate, and, you know, and the biggest bubble in the history in the bond and the stock market. So there's like ten, there's ten or eleven trillion dollars worth of sovereign debt around the world trading with a minus sign in front of it. So negative sovereign bond yields. This is a this is a mania, Elijah, that is is going to burst. But you have to know how to model the bursting. You know, you don't want to just sit here and own 100. You know, you can say I'm going to own 100 percent gold stocks, or I'm going to be 100 percent cash, or just going to go short the market. And you'll blow yourself up to smithereens. I created a model called the inflation deflation proprietary model. So it lets me know when to short the market, when to increase my gold positions, when to protect my principal. So I'm following it very closely. I think the opportunity of a lifetime could, could occur to not only protect your principal, but make money on the downside. And the downside is going to be probably worse than what was seen in 2000 and in 2008. Definitely. I know a lot of people have said that same thing and how basically with the crisis of 2008, when everything crashed, nothing was really fixed. It was kind of just papered over, you know, and it seems like we're coming to, as you're saying, a crisis that's worse than 2008. Oh, absolutely. As I just said, if you, you know, did we fix the stock market bubble? No, it's, it's much bigger than it was in 2008. Did we, uh, did we fix the home uh, real estate issue? Well, well, no. Real estate prices are back above their nominal highs set in, in 2006, 2007. Uh, did we fish, fix the bond bubble? Well, no. We took interest rates and left them there down to zero and left them there for almost nine years. Uh, governments are borrowing for free. You know, the, ten, the German 10-year boom is 0.3%. <laughs> I mean, it's hysterical to think, oh, European corporate bonds in the junk arena yield yet less than U.S. treasuries. I mean, there's so many distortions uh, out there that need to be rectified. We fixed not, you know, it's not that, that, not that we didn't fix anything. We made all of the problems worse. All right. Well, Michael Pento, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where they can find you online? Well, I, I, I just want to let you know that, um, you know, don't don't sit there and be afraid of the stock market. You know, we're here at Penta Portfolio Strategies. We've managed to kind of make reasonable returns over the past couple of years in a hedge strategy as we wait for that great opportunity to to sell short the stock market. When you do that without leverage, we use inverse ETFs. So if you're interested in kind of like making money in a hedge portfolio while you wait the crash and then hopefully capitalizing on this, this, this great opportunity, then, you know, uh, then you can reach out to me. My uh, office number is 732-772-9500. My email address is mpento at pentoport.com. And the website is pentoport.com. Uh, you can go there and subscribe to uh, my podcast. You get a free trial there. It's only forty nine ninety nine a year. I give pretty good advice, proprietary advice there. You, really some data there you won't find in many other places. Um, and uh, give us a call here. We don't bite. All right. Once again, Michael Pento, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Elijah.